Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel or welcome to the channel which is all about the narcissist personality disorder. This video is about what narcissists say to distract us from the truth. The lies from a narcissist to keep their behaviour hidden. Emotions are a strong feeling that depending on our mood, circumstances or relationship with another person depends on how our emotions can be feeling at any given time. Our feelings are a physical or emotional state of awareness and our instincts are a natural or intuitive way of thinking. When in a relationship with a narcissist, they will downplay our emotional feelings, deny or let us know something is wrong within how we feel to escape accountability for how they behave. We often then end up losing sight of their behaviour or their intent as it becomes hidden by the phrases they use to distract us from what they are doing. By getting us to focus on our feelings, by making out that in some way our feelings are what's in the wrong. When our feelings are not wrong, they are normal everyday feelings that all people have. Those negative feelings, which we can all have, just become heightened around a narcissist as our feelings are trying to protect us from their behaviour. However, their gaslighting often confuses us into believing that our feelings are at fault and not their toxic behaviour. Narcissists use many covert manipulation methods to distract those around them from the truth. They even lie through omission. The whole, I never lied, I just didn't tell you. Although very rare you'd even hear that from a narcissist. They say things that distract you from what they haven't told you, as often they wouldn't tell you then if you were to find out they still would not tell you they would deflect it and pass the blame onto you even when you catch them red-handed it will be a case of why are you looking through my things how can you of all people not trust me you know it's wrong to spy on people right don't you why have you looked through my phone don't you trust me there's this is nothing to do with what I've done. This is your trust issues. This is why I don't tell you anything. Your trust issues cannot handle the truth. You should go work on those. And um, when you've worked on your trust issues, you need to work on why you're looking through my things. This isn't my problem. You owe me an apology. And then they might top it off by falling silent on you or something to those effects. So, you're the one that's then left over analysing and questioning everything about your thoughts, your emotions, your feelings or your behaviour and doing your best to make it up to them, believing that you're at fault. You are not to blame. Abuse is abuse and there is no excuse. A narcissist often uses things like intrigue. They enjoy engaging in secret activities as they believe they're entitled to do so. They are very hypocritical and have double standards as they wouldn't like something done to them. However, they'll happily do it to others. They think that others might disagree with them and make a choice that doesn't suit the narcissist, They're, they will covertly, which is underhand and hidden, do what they want to do without a care for how it would affect those around them. That vagueness, that intrigue actually arouses curiosity in us, a desire to know the truth, a need to feel understood and a need to understand what's happening. Yet, instead of thinking, this person gives me bad vibes, we believe that we can just go and ask them. Because if someone asked us why we were working late or what we were doing with that person or what they meant, what we meant by something we said, we would tell them. 
Those with nothing to hide have no reason to hide the truth. However, as a narcissist has things to hide, as they're so manipulative, we are the ones left questioning our feelings, our thoughts, our instincts and not their behaviour. Often what a narcissist says is far from what they mean. These are Well, this video is about some of the more common phrases they say to manipulate us or a variation of how they say it to distract us from the truth. So we start to question ourselves and when we begin to question ourselves, they have the upper hand as they have our emotions, our thoughts, our feelings under their control. By passing the blame onto us, this can end up making us feel like we are the cause of the issues within the relationship when it's their behaviour that's the cause of the issues within the relationship. We own our actions, our reactions. We take responsibility for our behaviour as we see others' points of view. We then end up questioning ourselves. They will not be held responsible or take responsibility. They will not be held accountable. They will not take responsibility for their own behaviour. To them, whatever is right in their life is down to them. Whatever is wrong in their life is always someone else's fault. They lack the empathy to care for others' feelings or the cognitive reflection skills to see where they could be to blame, to see where their behaviour might be wrong. People on the narcissist personality disorder spectrum are very envious. It's part of the traits. They are very egotistical they are very entitled people they expect others to give them everything they want without them needing to give anything back in return they are hard to spot in society especially when you don't know what one is as they are the masters of manipulation they are the masters of words and lies and the lies they tell they often believe within themselves which makes them all the more convincing when they tell them they they lie so well that even when their actions don't match their words, we doubt our thoughts and our feelings and question ourselves. So here's some of the more common phrases that they tell people and what they truly mean. When they say, it's all your fault, I only did this because of you or something to those effects. They're just trying to distract you from whatever they've done. They want to pass all the blame over to you so that they can escape accountability and you work harder to clean up after them. When they say, I love you, they are just using the word love to control you. They love the attention that you give them. They love how you try to help them. They love how you try to fix any issues they are having. They love how you try to please them. They love how you take responsibility for anything negative that they do. They love how you try to fix any issues within the relationship that they have caused. They love how they can control you. Them saying I love you is not because they love something about you as a person, about who you are. It is to distract us from those very hurtful, toxic behaviours that show us they don't love us. If someone was to tell us they hate us and treat us like garbage, we know where we stand with them and we know that they're not for us. For someone to say they love us, um, tell us that we're to blame and then treat us wrong, and then offer those intermittent play nice when we try to make it up to them for their toxic behaviour and they lie about their toxic behaviour. They lie about our feelings. It's a very confusing place to be, especially when we don't understand it. When they say it's not all about you, they genuinely mean it's all about them. They cannot handle you being the centre of attention. If you ever mention your needs, they'll make you feel guilty and ashamed for having these normal needs. They 
with it's not all about you, they mean that they believe they are more important than you. So we end up questioning if we're being unreasonable, if we're being demanding or if we're being selfish. And they will tell us that we are being selfish to get out of doing anything for us. So we try to do more for them to keep them happy in the hope that they'll bring back those intermittent play nice stages. And as we live those times when they can treat us right, (coughs) that gives us the hope that if we just walk on eggshells around them, if we just try harder to please them, it gives us the hope that we will get that person back. But that person isn't who they sell themselves to be. When they say you have trust issues, this is to distract you from whatever they've done to cause your valid feelings to mistrust them. They want us to doubt and question our normal feelings and not their hurtful behaviour. When they say you're so jealous and insecure, again, to distract you from whatever they've done to cause you to possibly feel insecure. We we don't feel insecure for no reason, yet they don't want us to know the reason as that might mean we might make a choice that doesn't serve the narcissist's best interest. They want us to doubt our instincts so they can carry on doing whatever it is that they want to do that's causing our instincts to act on. When they say we are just friends... They could just be friends with that person, but they'll not tell you the whole truth to cause that intrigue. So as they are usually up to something, because they've not physically done something at this point, or they might just be talking in a friendly manner at this point, we are the ones that end up feeling bad because at that point they are just friends. Um... Yet that that just friend is usually a backup and our instincts are are trying to warn us that this isn't going to end well. Uh, At some point, they often cross the line. By that point, you might no longer dare speak up or if you do, they'll come at you with the whole, you don't trust me. Or if that intrigue causes you to look even though it hurts when you find the truth and you hope it's a mistake or you hope they'll apologize and see the error of their ways but no they come at you with the blame game of why are you looking through my things at the time you might not have even looked you might have just stumbled across it yet they will still blame you They'll often smear your name. The smear campaign doesn't just run after the relationship is over. It can run during the relationship and they can often smear your name to this friend saying how controlling and toxic you are so that if you ever talk to this friend about the narcissist's behaviour, it will just confirm to the friend how crazy you are. When When they say you don't have anyone to discuss your issues with, you only have me, they usually mean because they've already isolated you from support, removed anyone important in your life, so they are the ones that have power and control over you. Narcissists often tend to fear abandonment. They might not show it, and it might not be true in all narcissists, but a good majority of them fear abandonment. So they will move people miles away so that they can't, and the financial abuse, so that people can't just leave them. Yet a narcissist will have a backup plan and abandon their partner, their parents, their children, depending on whatever suits the narcissist at that time. When they say you're overthinking or you're overreacting, it's not a big deal. They mean you have perfectly normal thoughts, feelings and reactions to their behaviour and normal reactions to their unbelievable lies. Still, they want you to doubt yourself in every way. They want to make you feel bad and feel guilty for doubting them. When they say you're oversensitive, they mean your emotions are the problem, which which makes them in one way feel better. They 
they enjoy having the power to control um, our feelings and it, it makes us weaker and more susceptible to their toxic words. We're not oversensitive. They are using our weaknesses against us to make us feel sensitive. They are prodding and poking everything they can to make us feel sensitive and insecure. And then they're going to tell us that we're oversensitive. So we question our feelings and this gives them an advantage of our kindness and um, our abilities to want to reach a compromise, to want to get on with day-to-day -day life without drama. They enjoy hearing us trying to explain our good intentions as they can use these against us later on. They enjoy twisting anything we say and they will use us, use it against us as evidence further down the line. They will find a way with whatever we say to twist it and blame it on us. When they say they didn't have this problem with anybody else, this is to cause confusion within your mind, especially if it's that ex that they've already smeared their name to, made out how bad they are. So you question the fact that they left that person, yet that person would do this for them. Triangulation to break down our boundaries, when in reality, if they didn't have a problem with whoever they're saying they didn't have a problem with, good for them, but it is not you. So they will have that problem with you. And this can be quite confusing as you might not have had problems with other people like you do with a narcissist. We can try to work problems out when in reality, some people who don't communicate, don't listen to reason, don't give and take, they only take. The problem we have is being around them when we should be walking in the other direction which isn't easy to do because often we do not see it happening while it's happening and they put that much fear into us whether they do that overtly the obvious threats or covertly when when they follow it up with I was only joking um, but they put that much fear into us they isolate us we are often trapped within the relationship when they say, I'm sorry you feel that way, they're not sorry, they're only sorry um, that they got caught, they're only sorry that they their um, toxic behaviour has been found out, they'll not make a genuine apology, only a false apology. To apologise, people need to be able to reflect on their behaviour and take ownership and responsibility for their behaviour and regret, be remorseful for their behaviour, which a narcissist often isn't because they don't see their behaviour as their as the problem. They see you as their problem. So they'll only ever offer that false apology in which you will to be you will be to blame for their behaviour and it'll be a case of I'm sorry you or I'm sorry but they'll always find a way to turn it on to you they don't have the level of empathy to care for how they've made you feel only how others might perceive their actions when they say you'll never find someone like me that grandiose trait of the disorder of their arrogance the fact that they feel superior they often believe you'll never find someone like them and we don't want to find someone like them from a narcissist, we learn what love isn't so we can find what love is. When they say you're crazy to distract you from whatever you've found out about or whatever they've done. Or when you react to them prodding and poking and baiting away at you. Or when you start to stand up for yourself. So, so when they say you're crazy, you question who you are and your actions over theirs. Similar to when they say, how would they feel when you start going no contact with flying monkeys, etc. They'll, they'll try to guilt trip you into not doing so by getting you to question how somebody else would feel when you're trying to protect yourself. They use these things to get you to doubt yourself, question yourself, turn on your own thoughts and feelings and emotions. 
turn away from what your truths are, away from what your thoughts, feelings and instincts are telling you to go against the truth that you can only feel and often you cannot see, to distract you from whatever they are doing so they can continue their hurtful ways while you go work on yourself. Only these thoughts and feelings don't go away, often they get worse because they carry on doing what they're doing, we just learn to speak up less and put up with more. When they say it wasn't that bad, yes it was that bad, often it was far worse, however they want to downplay their behaviour and make out your feelings and reactions are the problem as they're over the top feelings. Our feelings are not over the top, it's how we feel and those who care wouldn't want us to feel that way. When they say I was only joking, they say incredibly hurtful things. Um, then depending on how we respond, if we, if our response is not in their favour, they will say, I was only messing, can you not take a joke? With this, they're often testing how far they can push us and push our boundaries. We're left telling ourselves, it was only a joke, it wasn't that bad, they didn't mean to do it, if only I, I'm lucky to have them, nobody would have me, I'm too sensitive, they're only a friend, they didn't mean to do it, I'm hard to be around because I overreact all the time and they do forgive me, when in reality they were being serious, it was that bad, they did mean to do it, nothing you can do would change it, you deserve better, you have very valid feelings and you are not crazy. You're just around someone trying to send you that way. These comments from a narcissist are often why after coming out of a narcissistic relationship, um, we end up doubting everything around us and everyone. We end up feeling judged, uh, silly or stupid and we end up feeling scared to tell people in case we sound crazy. We are not crazy. Now is the time to rebuild yourself and cut negativity out of your life. Negative things happen in life. You do not need negative people making things worse. You are not silly. You are not stupid and you are not crazy just because one person managed to manipulate you. You are just loving and kind and you can move on. You can heal. Things like anxiety, we can learn and heal from our anxiety. It might seem impossible, it might seem difficult at the time, but we can work through this. Sometimes we just have to get up day after day and go again and again and again until we see some light, until we start getting there. And then we have to stop and look back at how far we've come when we're having those bad moments. How you felt and how you feel are normal. They are very valid feelings. They are your emotions. They are your feelings. They are your instincts. You are not alone. People out there do understand and have been through very similar. Trust yourself again by listening to your emotions, your feelings and your instincts. Remember who you once were. You've had your thinking and your mindset retrained and now you can work on retraining your mindset to think how you want to think. It is possible because your mindset's already been retrained one way to think how the narcissist wants you to think and now you are in control of thinking how you want to and learning for you. To to discover who you want to be, to to understand that everyone's allowed an opinion, but if you do not agree with it, you can move on with no harm done. You can work on yourself. The best relationship you can have is the one you have with yourself. So start putting those efforts in with yourself today. Self-care is allowed. It's a must. It's needed so that you can be at your best to give your best. Learning to love yourself for who you are. I shall add the videos in the description for um, how narcissists invalidate our feelings, um, another way they manipulate to take us down and the gaslighting because gaslighting is all another form of how they distort and distract us from reality. I shall also add the links for the online courses that are available. If anyone has any advice um, or your biggest takeaway from this video, please add it into the comments. I hope everyone has an amazing day. If you 
do like the information on this channel and it helps, then please hit the subscribe button. Thank you very much for listening. Bye.